the teachings of Jesus. He's repeating scripture. He's explaining Luke chapter 17 where Jesus talked about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and replete through many other places in the Bible, and especially a number of places through the book of Matthew. He says the kingdom of heaven is not a place. It is within, what does Luke chapter 17 say? The kingdom of God is within you. It is within, but where is it within? Is it in my chest? Is it in my heart? Is it in my life? No. It is in our deepest thought. It is the reality of our individual awareness, and it is the reality of universal mind. It is the recognition of our oneness with the divine. It is the perfect design, which is God's idea of creation, and can only be discerned spiritually. It is the real of everything. The kingdom of God is the consciousness of God. As we think the thoughts of God, we shall have a newer, diviner life in our body and in our affairs. We shall have entered the kingdom. I think the man broke it down. Yeah. But then he gave us another man to break it down a little further. So we're going to do a little coat cracking here. Luke chapter 17 said, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Mm. Neither shall you say, lo here nor lo there. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Mm. And then in Mark 1. Now after that, John was in prison. John, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And saying, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. So what does at hand mean? That's what I'm talking about today. And in Matthew chapter 3, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of, saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven has come. So the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is interchangeable. It means the same thing. Now, I want you to pull out the other form, which has all the little arrows in it. See, you got that one? Now, this just came to me about time I should have been getting on the freeway. Coming here. <laughs> stuff to start flowing and I opened up the document that I had already done and I started drawing these arrows and I saw something more clear than I did last night when I was um, preparing this so I'm going back to what I just read um, this, this page that you have with the arrows on it I just read this to you but what we want to do is kind of dissect it we're going to analyze it we're gonna, you understand we're going to get into it the kingdom of heaven is not a place. Well, if the kingdom of heaven is not a place, likewise, neither is hell. Mm. <laughs> heaven is not a place, and likewise, hell is not a place. Heaven, the kingdom of heaven is within you, and so is the kingdom of hell. Watch these arrows now, we're going to go somewhere. If one hits you, I'm just the messenger. It, <laughs> it is the reality. What is the reality? The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. It is the reality of our individual awareness. And it is the reality of universal mind. Look at those arrows as I read. It is the recognition of our oneness with the divine. What is our recognition with the oneness of with the divine? Our, the kingdom of heaven. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. Our recognition of our oneness with the divine is what the kingdom of heaven is. When you pray, pray after this matter. Who said that? Jesus. He said, when you pray, pray after this man. Listen to the kingdom of heaven. He said, our Father, come on, come on. That's that universal mind. That's that universal mind. See, this is a treatment. This is a prayer. 
This is medicine. This is something that you're doing to yourself when you pray. Our Father, what? Who art in heaven. The kingdom of heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. Thy kingdom come. Now, if you're repeating this every day, like 90% of us in here do every morning, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, every night. I, I, yeah. I, that's what you're doing. You're hooking up. That's what the Lord's Prayer is for. And that's what he said. After this manner, pray ye. Our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. So you're praying that God's mind be open to your mind so that you can see that your mind and God's mind are one mind. Thy come into my awareness and let me sense and know that thou art that I am that I am that thou art. Make me know that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Are you reading right now? You see what I got there? My those errors. Make me know that in him I live and move and have my being. That's what you're doing when you're repeating these words. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Make me know that like Jesus who gave me this prayer, that the Father and I are one. Are one. That he that seeth me sees the Father. That's the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the knowingness in your mind who you are and your relationship with the divine. Yes. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Where does that arrow go on earth? Where does it go back to? Individual awareness. That's what on earth is. On earth is your individual awareness of your oneness with the universal Mind. As it is in heaven. Where does that arrow go to from as it is in heaven? Back to universal mind. What is heaven? Heaven is universal mind. He heaven is that, that substance, that energy, that invisible nothingness that is everywhere present and everywhere equally present. It, it flows through you. The kingdom of heaven. So, Ernest Holmes says, it is the perfect design. What is the perfect design? The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God. It is the perfect design which is God's idea of creation and can only be discerned spiritually. Then there is that line that says, Give us this day our daily bread. There it is right there. Give us this day our daily bread. You're giving yourself a spiritual mind treatment when you're repeating mm. the Lord's prayer. Right. Mm. That's where your spirituality is being developed. All through the day you're saying, when you say give us this day our daily bread, what you're, what is bread? What you're saying is, give me all through the day, Lord. Let me know that your presence is with me. Let me know that I'm walking with you, that I'm talking with you, that you're leading me, that you're guiding me, that you're letting me know that you're not only there, but you're here inside me, in my mind. Feed me! Your divine wisdom, that's what his bread is. Give us this day our daily bread. And you're spiritualizing your consciousness when you're repeating this spiritual mind treatment, which is what the Lord's Prayer is. As we think the thoughts of God, who do you know who thought the thoughts of God more than any other human being that ever existed? Jesus. But he came to be the great example, the great way show, the great teacher that we should imitate, that we should follow as a model. He knew that where, where his thoughts ended and God's thoughts began. Do you? Do you? That's what we're here to learn today as we spiritualize our consciousness. So Ernest Holmes says, as we think the thoughts of God, we shall have a newer, diviner life in our body and in our affairs. We shall have entered the kingdom of God. Simply a state of holiness. The kingdom of heaven, he says, is not a place. It is within, in our deepest thought. Then the prayer goes on what? Thy will be done. You remember that? Yeah. 
thy will be done. In other words, what he is saying here that he has given you the keys to the kingdom. That's what the science of mind teaching is and other philosophies and teachings like this. It is only a textbook, a curriculum, a course that serves as keys to the kingdom. That's what our training is about. If you go through science of mind, like science of mind to practice your training minister, we're learning keys to the kingdom. What are the keys to the kingdom? The science of your mind. How to use your mind. How to use the mind of God and to control conditions in your life and to navigate through life successfully. The keys to the kingdom. Jesus gave in the New Testament the keys to the kingdom. He said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Now, the first key is free will. And that's where our trouble is. Am I right now? The first key is free will. Let me use some practical examples. Let's look at the man under the bridge. You see him every day. The guy is 10. Some of them have a couch and sofa and everything. Am I right? And you can go by there 365 days and he's still there. That's his what? Home. But that's something else. That's his kingdom. That is his kingdom. And what is operating through his life is the key to the kingdom, the major key, the main key, the primary key, the predominant key, the dominant key, free will. He's in his kingdom. Now you try to bring him to your kingdom, and that's not going to work. Am I right? Compare your kingdom to his kingdom. He doesn't want your kingdom. He wants his kingdom. Now that bothers you. Especially if it's a relative or if it's friend or somebody that you know. Because you're just chasing them all the time, trying to get them back out of their kingdom into your kingdom. Am I right? Amen. And he looks at you and says, you know what? You can't help me until I want to be helped. You see that I can help you. You see me as in hell. But what you see as my hell is my heaven. As far as I'm concerned, where you are is hell. I don't have no bills to pay. I don't go to no doctor. I'm not sick. I don't have problems. You are in hell. I'm in heaven. And what do we do? We kill ourselves trying to pull them out of their hell, which is their heaven. And that becomes our hell, and we're living in hell while they are living in heaven. Because I had one to tell me who was very close. She said, look at Mama. You can't help me until I want to help. So I just want you to leave me alone. <laughs> so what happens is that they invite you into there, they might live in a small studio, you know, and they might be, you know, as, as unkept or whatever, and they invite you over, and you just say, I hate to go there, but you go, and when you go, they feel good. Come on and sit down. Right. I ain't got much, but it's mine. All right. It's mine. And I'm happy here. But in your mind, you see it as living in hell. Yeah. And they see it as that. I'm all right. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Because see, in this kingdom that is theirs, they are in control. That's what a kingdom is. With your kingdom, with your kingdom, you're in control. I have authority. I reign supreme. I am sovereign. What I say goes. Am I right? And here I'm in a certain state. That's what a kingdom is. It's a state. I'm in a state of mind to where I'm just at peace with myself and where I am. So what we're learning here today is that sometimes we are in a place of hell and we become, we become so adapted to it, so accustomed to it, so used to it, it has become so normal until it has become our heaven. 
little confusing, but let's untangle it. Jesus was coming at a time when it was the, the, the dominant power was the Roman Empire. Am I right? Yeah. And so he came talking about the kingdom of heaven is coming. But they thought he was going to set up a kingdom on the world like I just, you know, a place where you rule and you're in control. But they didn't know that he was talking about a spiritual kingdom. A coming, because when he came, the word repent was there. Repent, 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 repent. Some, some of needs change your mind. Why? Because a change is coming. Am I right, Martin? A change is coming. A change is coming. A change is coming. And then it later on says, and it has been fulfilled. And today, this has been fulfilled. And so then when he went off into a new dimension, into a new body, and into a new life, he promised that he would come back and work through all humanity who was open to receive him and help them establish their individual kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven within them. I'm just one of the successful ones. Learned it here through the teachings where if I learned the keys and I received the keys, keys to the key kingdom here, Sassaman 1, Sassaman 2, and then practitioner's consciousness. And I've been using that key ever since. So, let's just do a little self-diagnosis here. Do you know people or do you have cousins who are just struggling to get by? One day at a time. Just trying to make it. Life is hard. But the Lord's going to make a way somehow. If it ain't one thing, it's another. If I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. <laughs> Put some money on my books. Guess who we're going just one problem after the other. They're broke, sad, isolated, loneliness. Bitter. Bitter. Don't, Bitter. don't step on a crack. Don't step on a crack. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that for most of these people, more often than not, they are in their heaven. They have the key to change, mm. to repent. Mm. Repent. Repent means to change. Mm. The kingdom of heaven is, now let's go to this, at hand. Mm -hmm. See, they have that power at hand to turn that key, to apply that key, and come out of that hell into heaven. But you can't come out of it if you think it's your heaven. Come on now. Why do you stay with her so long? Yeah. Why won't you leave him? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to go there and you're going to make him leave and make her leave. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And then you are in the cemetery and they are still right. living on. Right. Right. Why? Because they are in their heaven and you won't leave them alone. Oh. The kingdom of heaven is right here, right here. Yeah. Repent, change your mind, and the walk out of it in a twinkle of an eye. Yeah. Woo. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Use it yeah. or lose it. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so to, all you have to do is to say to the problem, which is your heaven, and you think it's your hell, is I have no use for this. Get it on. Yeah. Get it on. And what happens is that you shift the state of mind from hell to heaven in the twinkling of an eye. The kingdom of heaven is a state of mind. It is not a place. And just as the kingdom of heaven is a state of mind, so is the kingdom of hell. What we believe is that you don't die and go to heaven. You don't die and go to hell. When you pass on and you sleep from one place to another, you wake up and you fell asleep. You fall asleep 
in the state of mind of heaven, that's where you wake up. You fall asleep in the state of mind of hell, that's where you wake up. You just have a tormented mind. Or you have a blissful and peaceful mind. Die fall die with a smile, you wake up with a smile. You die with a frown, you wake up with a frown. It's a state of mind that does not change when you go from one place to another. And also, someone told me this last night on the telephone, that she uh, was working with a very close friend, and that the friend had an eye, had a, had a eye problem, and uh, had gone to the Jewel Steen Clinic, the clinic, is that what it's called up there? Yes, 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 Jewel Stein. And uh, she, uh, was in a very critical condition. And she said to this friend, here's what I want you to say. I want you to say this, every day, in every way, I am getting better and better. And she said, she's told her to say it at least three times a day. And say it when it comes to your mind. And she said, it was a few days later where this friend told her, you know what, I can see. This eye is getting better. I don't know what's going on. See, what is happening is that her state of mind was changing. She was changing from a state of mind of hell into a state of mind of heaven. She was using the key. You have the key. He says, I give you the keys to the kingdom. And the keys are found right there in the New Testament. And then that New Testament has been translated and translated into many different other teachings and curriculums and courses. But it's still the same key. Yes. And so when you come here, that's what we are giving you, our keys to the kingdom. So let's say every day. Every day in every way, I am getting better and better. Use the key. Every day in every way, I am getting better and better. Use the key. Every day in every way, I am getting better and better. That's where it's at. Yes. What did you get out of this thing? Who, who got out something that, that you say that you, you ain't going back here the same way? What did you get? Anybody? Come on. Yeah, me. Yeah. I just got out of it. It, it just blessed me knowing about thinking of heaven and hell. It's just you, your state of consciousness, your state of mind is just. Repent, change your mind. You don't have to accept what it's in your appearance of it. You just have to stand on God's word and just move forward. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Come on. I got that. Um, I have no use for this anymore. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to let go of those old folks and pain. They're not comfortable, yeah. but just to having them around. And so some of that stuff I need to just get rid of, and I just don't have any use for it anymore. So I'm shifting the way I think, because I want to change in the way I feel, so I don't have any use for it anymore. <laughs> What I got out of this is uh, I have a relative who I think is living in hell and it never occurred to me before that the reason she's in it is because she thinks it's her heaven. Thank you. And all right. One more and then we'll you just confirmed from A Course in Miracles. Nothing and no one has any power over me except that which I give it. The other thing is, the Buddhists keep my eyes on my own plate. We felt your power 
and your presence hovering over us. But you didn't come alone. You brought all your homies with you. What? The great mystics and saints and sages and seers and healers of the ages mingle among us. Hey, imparting their wisdom through our minds. Helping us to receive this bread of life, this flesh, matter from heaven. We each here have received the word and the words of God, and they have fallen into receptive, fertile soil. Hey. And those seeds are life, energy, healing power, releasing the wisdom of God and the wisdom of Christ into our thoughts, causing a transformation in our thought pattern, in our belief, in our feeling, in our attitude, casting out every thought that is unlike the divine nature of God and replacing in its place God's thoughts and God's will for each of our lives. Oh yeah, everything that is unlike God and unlike God's nature and God's wisdom and God's word has to cease its operation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we cast it out right now in the name yes. of yes. Jesus, which simply means just in the manner that he did it and does it and is doing it right now for us, in us, through us, by us. And so each of us leave this place repenting having repented, which simply means having changed our minds mm -hmm. about what we thought was something and call it nothing. Mm -hmm. All right. Trying to be something, but we've taken back our power. And so we walk out of this place transformed, reborn, renewed, restored, reinvigorated. Oh yeah. Showing up in a new life, yes. leaving the old life behind. Mm. Now, Father, our prayer is to <laughs> simply seal this prayer of truth and this prayer of faith mm. with the highest heartfelt gratitude that we can raise to your name as we say thank you, Father, Mother God. Amen. 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 Amen.